You're watching The Dish TV, the talk show from SRI International that highlights the most important part of our institute, our people. I'm Renita Malhotra-Hura, Head of Marketing and Communications, and today I'm joined by Manish Kotari, President of SRI International. In part two of this interview, we talk about how SRI collaborates across our divisions to empower entrepreneurs and solve difficult problems. A lot of medicine is very physical, right? Uh, at the minimum, you need sensors, but often you need to poke and prod mm -hmm. and get a sense of, you know, is that bump that you're feeling really stiff or not so stiff? So medicine is always going to need all three, uh, sensing, computing and analytics, which includes AI, actuation, which includes robotics or some form of application. So we hope that at the end of the day, the patient will end up with a far superior diagnosis, a far superior experience, and the physician will actually feel a lot more protected in their decision making. So the key here is to find things of value and then apply them in the appropriate way. So SRI has uh, intellectual property uh, available to help startups in this area who are specifically interested in creating um, entrepreneurs, I should say, who are specifically interest, interested in creating healthcare startups. Can you tell me a little bit more about those? Sure. So what SRI does, SRI does mainly research. We have an excellent computer science lab that generates a lot of patents in the area of, sort of AI, computer vision, speech. We have an excellent lab in robotics that is often doing robotics. We have a very strong lab in sensing. So things like sensing compounds from your breath, et cetera, as an example. We also have a, a, a full division in biosciences. So biosciences where we have both tools to test what our hypotheses are and use the software we may have created or actually create drugs or devices themselves. Could it go the other way where if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm interested, but I don't specifically know, I could come to you and say, well, what do you have in your IP stack that I could work with? Yeah, so it works both ways. Either an entrepreneur has to know exactly what broad area they're interested in and they want to ask what IP we have, or it works in a way where the entrepreneur actually says, I have multiple uh, areas I'm interested in and I don't know which one I'm gonna win, why, what are the areas you think you have IP that could be useful in? So Manish, you mentioned earlier Symphony, which is a, a platform coming mm -hmm. out of SRI's biosciences division. But then you also have these ventures, SRI ventures, portfolio mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. which might be healthcare oriented startups. What is the difference? So SRI has a pretty simple uh, business philosophy. It's invent, apply and transition. So invent is what we primarily do. We are always inventing new IP and new ways to solve difficult problems, often with the support of groups such as DARPA. In transition is when we are spinning things out and getting them out in the real world. In many cases, you need to use apply-based techniques. The apply-based techniques are where people want to give you an input. I want to solve Alzheimer's and I want to solve it using this pathway and this target. Can you suggest some drugs some chemistries that could handle it. And then when we do the, the analysis, we come up with a set of chemistries and we give those chemistries back to a customer. That is the apply model, where we're applying our platform rather than transitioning our platform to solve it. So we at SRI don't force ourselves into one model or the other. We look for the optimal model in the optimal circumstance. And going forth into the next 10 years or so, what do you see as the biggest challenges in this area? I would say there's two big challenges. One is the concept of trust. The person gives you reassurance and confidence that they are indeed thinking about you. Without that, as more systems proliferate, the loss of trust, the justifiable loss of trust will increase. So how do we create systems that both provide the effectiveness that we want while maintaining trust, both being trustworthy and maintaining trust? That is a huge issue and that is a huge opportunity. A second related concern is communication around medical or healthcare issues between the patient and the physician. Mm. A physician is a deeply trained person with knowledge about this. A patient doesn't even know that he, he or she has a disease specifically. When you have such a mismatch in communications, things go wrong. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Therein lies a great opportunity for some of these modern techniques to start trying to break down both the trust barrier as well as the communication barrier. And those are two things that no human could replace. Uh, so it truly becomes an augmentation because you need the machine to achieve those. You still need the human to achieve the optimal right response for the patient. I think, you know, I will end by saying that I think you, we should expect to see a far brighter future for medicine with all of these technologies being integrated in.